Swift Scholars. We're going to learn about property observers and have another EU challenge. Not only are you going to learn about property observers, but we'll cover why they can improve your code and can make for good programming practice. We'll show you how to resize SF symbols if used inside of a button. And we'll finish off another EU challenge. It's property observer time, so set your sights on awesomeness. Now we're gonna make our code a little bit more efficient by using something called property observers. So property observers are called every time that a variable's value changes. You can think of these almost like functions that are attached to a particular value or particular variable. And every time that value changes, the lines of code inside the property observer will execute. Now property observers are in curly braces right after the variable has been declared, and it will include one or both of these subsections also set off by curly braces. Will set that's called just before the value is changed changed and did set that's called immediately after a value has been changed. So this is how we're going to use property observers in our code. Inside of list table view cell, we're going to declare a variable called to do item, which is of type to do item, and we're going to attach a property observer to it. And every time the value to do item changes, we'll update name label.txt and checkbox button is selected with the new properties inside of to do item. Now where do we update to do item? Well, we'll do that right inside of cell for row at. Now that's inside of our view controller file, the to-do list view controller. This will let us cut out the two lines inside of cell for row at that updated the name label.txt and checkbox button dot is selected. And by putting them both inside of did set, which is inside list table view cell, our custom cell file, we modularize our code. The code around updating the interface for our new custom cell is all inside of that custom cell file. And anytime our main view controller makes a change to the to-do item that displays data in that cell, well, we'll pass that data over to the cell so that the user interface is updated. Some important rules around property observers. They don't run if the value is initialized right when it's declared. And even if a value is updated with the same value, the property observer is going to fire. So if you've updated properties with the same exact value that was in there already, it'll still count as an update the did set will still function. Now, why is this useful? Well, for a bunch of reasons. One is that it supports simultaneous development. It's really easy to assign a programmer a block of code that you know she or he is gonna work on. So, hey, you are responsible for the table view cells, you're responsible for the view controller. It's also easier to test components when they're modularized like this and their code isn't spread out across various different files. It also makes these things easier to maintain. So if you're updating code that's associated with the table view cell, you'll only have to deal with the code in the table view cell because the view controller simply updates the value inside the cell and inside of the custom table view cell code that's where all the code executes it also fosters reuse it's much easier to reuse modularized code that's not spread across lots of different files and we'll eventually learn about a software design principle called model view controller this design pattern is really common we're going to refer to this and it's a way to write better more maintainable more reusable code so setting up property observers is super easy. We're gonna do ours in list table view cell. So I've got that file opened up and you know, just to keep my IB outlets up top, I'm gonna to move my um, weak var delegate variable just below those. And then right below my delegate variable is where I'm gonna put in this property observer. And we start like we're declaring this variable as an implicitly unwrapped optional. So we'll say var lowercase to do item colon uppercase to do item with an exclamation point afterward. Now here's where the property observer piece starts. We'll do an open curly, the Xcode will add a close curly. We don't need will set that will execute lines before it changes the value. We'll say did set, that's lowercase d capital S, open and close curly. And so this code is gonna listen in to see whenever we change to do item. And if we have changed it, we have set it, we're gonna update name label.txt and we're gonna set that equal to to do item dot name. And we're gonna set checkbox item dot is selected equal to to do item dot completed. That's it. Now let's head over to to do list view controller dot swift. Make sure that you're inside of the cell for row at function. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete these two lines that updated the interface objects inside of the cell. So I'll backspace over those and we'll say instead cell dot lowercase to do item and look code completion knows that we just added to the cell this new variable named to do item and it says it's of type to do item. And we'll set that equal to to do items bracket index path dot row close brackets. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take the whole element of the array to do items, which is an object of to do item. We don't have to set the individual properties here simply by updating the value inside of cell. Then that will trigger the property observer inside of the cell, which looks for changes to to do item. We'll recognize the change and we'll update the name label and the checkbox button. So we'll build and run. You won't notice any change in the way that the app executes, but we've just written some more modular, more maintenance 
maintainable code and we know how to use property observers. So I can update my checkboxes here, quit out, reload, everything is saved, everything's displaying and behaving the way we expect it to. I think it's time for a challenge. So let's open up this EU challenge project that we haven't seen in a couple of videos. We'll add a custom table view cell with two labels, one which is called name label, and that should be updated with nation.name, and another which it should refer to as capital label, which should update with nation.capital. Now in the example at the right, my name label uses the system title one font, and capital label uses the subhead font. Now if you find that you have to change the height of your cell, there's one thing to note. You'll change the height of the cell using the size inspector, but you also have to include another method, this table view height for row at method. And all you have to do here is return the same number which indicates the size of the cell. The cell at the right is 60 points tall, so that's why I'm returning 60. Now add a button that has the default image as square and the selected image as euro sign square. Both of these are available in SF symbols, and that's what you see being used at the right. You can refer to this button as euro button, use a custom protocol to toggle the euro button's image and change the uses euro property, be sure to save any changes to uses euro, and use property observers to update the cell's user interface. Now in the solution I'll also show you how I made the image on the button a little bit bigger than it would normally show up. Give it a try Swifter, pause, and we're back. And let's see how you did. So now we're in the EU application. Let's get into main storyboard and first create that custom cell. So click on cell in the document outline, go up under the attributes inspector and under style, select custom. And now we need a button. So I'll click on library, drag a button over to the left side of the cell and position it. Backspace over the title, which just says button. And then under image, I'm gonna type in square to give me a blank square for my default configuration. Now the square image is kind of small. I told you that I would show you how you can make it larger. So right underneath image, you'll see that there's an area that says default symbol configuration. And under configuration, I'm going to select point size. That lets me increase the point size. I'll set my point size to 36 and you'll see the button gets larger. My cell is starting to look a little cramped here. So I'm going to set the cell's height, clicking on cell in the document outline, then in the size inspector and under row height, I'm going to put in 60. But remember, I'm also going to need a method to be able to resize the cell too. We'll add that method later. Now I'll reposition the button. Let's go up to library and drag over a label. I'll click the label command D to duplicate it. I'll position the other label below. I'll stretch the right side of this first label out to the right margin. I'll click on the T inside of font to bring up the font dialog. Click on font and select title one as the style. The label font's bigger, so we'll adjust the height of the top label, reposition the bottom label, stretch it out so it's at the right margin and change the bottom label's font attribute to subhead. Now we also need to set the image for the button when it's selected, so we'll click back on the button, and under state config, we'll pull down on default and select selected. Now click in the text field next to image. I'm gonna type in euro. We see that four symbols show up. I'm gonna select this one that says euro sign square. Unfortunately, the Xcode doesn't show the updated image on the interface builder canvas. It's still only showing what's there for default, but it's definitely in there and it's sized properly. Now we need to create a Swift file that's associated with this new custom table view cell. So we'll go under File, New, File, create a new Coco Touch class. We'll make sure that it's of subclass UI Table View Cell. Very important, make sure it's UI Table View Cell. We'll give it the name List Table View Cell. Click on Next then click create. We'll clear this file out in just a bit, but let's go back to main storyboard. Remember, we've got to click on the cell now and go to identity inspector and set the class type to list table view cell. Now the cell is identified with that class file we just added, list table view cell. So let's click that class file, option click on main storyboard to get into the assistant editor, and now we can create our outlets. First, I'm going to highlight and delete the two functions that Xcode adds in list table view cell. We don't need those, so we should just have emptiness between the two curlies. Control drag over. Oh, I want to do it from the button, so I need to find the button in the document outline. Control drag over, and let's call the button Euro button. Click connect. We'll create outlets for the two labels, naming them country label and capital label. We also need to create an IB action for this button. I'm going to name it Euro tapped. Look, it also shows up as an outlet by default. So we want to make sure that we select the connection as action and then make sure that the type is specified as a UI button. Click the X above the main storyboard to get out of assistant editor mode. And let's write some code in viewcontroller.swift. Let's jump our down to cell for row at. And remember what we need to do is cell. What type is cell? If we option click on top of it, oh yeah, it's a UI table view cell. What do we need to set it to? We need a subclass that is the class that we just created. So we'll use as exclamation point list table view cell. 
I'll perform the steps without the property setter first, and then in the end, we'll see the advantages of the property setter. Now I'm going to backspace over these previous lines that referred to text label and detail text label. Those were for the default cell, but we're not using that anymore. I'll shift command K to clean the project just to make sure that Xcode knows that I've reclassified cell as a list table view cell. And sure enough, when I press dot, I see country label. Select that dot text equals nations bracket index path dot row bracket dot country. We'll update the second label cell dot capital label dot text equals nation bracket index path dot row bracket dot capital. And below that cell dot euro button dot is selected equals nation bracket index path dot row bracket dot uses euro. Now I'll build and run here just to show that we've got a problem because we didn't add something that I said we needed to add. Let's take a look at our user interface. And gack! Ugh! The cell heights were not properly resized. Remember, I said that we need to add that additional table view height for row at method. So we'll add that right to the end of the extension here. If I type height for row at, we see that the function shows up. It says asks delegate for the height to use for the row. Press return to select this. Then for the code, all you need to do is type in return 60, build and run. And we can see our heights are all properly resized for 60 points each. Nice! That height for row at function is easy to forget. Xcode's behavior is pretty deceptive because when you use size inspector, it only resizes things on the storyboard, but it doesn't resize it in code. Now you know what happens if you forget height for row at. Now we need to go ahead and write that protocol. And we'll put that protocol at the top of list table view cell.swift. It is possible to put a protocol in its own separate file, but this protocol is so small, it's okay for us to go ahead and put it right in the class. We'll type in the keyword protocol, let Xcode fill things in, under name, we'll put list table view cell delegate. That's what we're going to name this protocol and then put colon lowercase class afterward. In between the curlies, we're only going to require one function as part of the protocol rules. We'll say func euro button toggle. And then in between the parentheses, we'll say sender colon list table view cell. Make sure we close parens. Now, again, we're not writing the function here. We're just saying this function is required. Then down below, we need to declare our delegate variable. So remember how we do that. That's weak var delegate colon and then list table view cell cell delegate question mark and now let's fill in the guts for our ib action so we'll say delegate question mark dot and look xcode already knows what the protocol says the delegate can do this function that we mentioned in the protocol definition above it's required euro button toggled press enter on that now the sender is of type list table view cell but that's where we're in right now so we could just put self in there because that's the name of the class Let's go back in viewcontroller.swift and in our extension, let's adopt the protocol that we just created. So after the two protocols that are already part of viewcontroller, we can say comma list table view cell delegate. Xcode knows this protocol. It's in code completion. And also after it thinks it gives me an error. How come it knows the rules and I'm not conforming to those protocol rules, but it offers to fix that by giving me the stub of the required function. Stub me Xcode. And we see it writes the outline for Euro button toggle the required function that's part of this protocol. Thank you, Xcode. Now, another thing that's easy to forget is setting the cells delegate. We want to do that in cell for row at. So before we even fill out the function, let's go ahead after we declare the cell with let cell and type in cell dot delegate equals self. Now we can fill in the function. We'll get the index path for this selected cell. So we'll say if let selected index path equals table view dot index. And we see that index path four, that's the one we want. It wants a UI table view cell. So press enter to accept this. What specific UI table view cell? The sender that called it. So we can just put in sender and we can look at our function definition. It says that's going to be the list table view cell. The index path will tell us the row where this button was pressed. So now that we know the row where the button was pressed, we can toggle the uses euro property at that location. So we can say nations bracket selected index path dot row close bracket dot uses euro equals. And remember, this is the one where we want to get the opposite of what it currently is. That's what toggling means. So we'll copy this statement after the equal sign exclamation point, paste that in and that toggles true to false, false to true. Then we need to reload the table view row. So we'll say table view dot reload rows. There's only that plural weirdness. So we've got to put our selected index path in between brackets. We'll do that with dot automatic. And then on the next line, we'll simply say save data with our open and close parens. 
Now look in cell for row at. We've got three lines that are updating interface elements that are inside of that cell. A better programming practice is to have the cell itself change its interface items. So this is where we're going to go ahead and use a property setter. Let's head back to list table view cell. Now first we're going to declare a property var nation colon nation exclamation point. That's how we normally declare properties, but we're going to put in a set of curlies. Inside the set of curlies we'll do a did set, which is another set of curlies, and we'll say, hey, if nation changes at all, we're going to update these three elements in our user interface. We'll set country label dot text equal to nation dot country, capital label dot text equal to nation dot capital, and euro button dot is selected equal to the boolean value nation dot uses euro and with all this excitement i almost forgot we set capital label dot text equal to a string that begins with capital colon and then a space and then we'll do string interpolation inside which says nation dot capital now, why do we use property observers for our custom table view cell? Imagine this. We've got two programmers working on the same project. One is coding the view controller. The other person is responsible for updating that table view cell. But the table view cell interface updating code is inside of the view controller. So two people have to work on one file. Not good. But what we can do now with our property observer is delete these three lines of interface code. And instead, after declaring our cell delegate, simply update cell nation equal to nations index path dot row that's going to call the property observer that's going to update these three interface items everything is modularized cell programmer you work in your swift file view controller person you work in your file ready for a team effort let's build and run sweet johnny eye that looks nice let's see what happens if we go in here and we give croatia the euro and denmark the euro but take it away from cyprus we move estonia to the top we'll select done let's quit and then build and run again and see is it updating our data if estonia is up top we're good and we're good swifter you should feel great about knowing how to use property observers your skills are getting stronger and stronger keep at it